cuties, I'm Lanikki, and you're watching what happened on the soaps. Today is November the 22nd on a Tuesday. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, y'all, I'm going to give this one a 7.5. It was solid to me. Um, let's just jump right into it. So we see Katie and Bill. Baby, I am here for Katie. <laughs> she told Bill, you don't want me because he told my, you're the woman I love. You're the woman I've been chasing for all these months. You're the woman I've been begging to come back to me. So come on back to me, Katie. And she said, Bill, please, let me tell you what happened. You begged Brooke to come back to you again. And she said, no, sir, I do not want you. And so here I come walking through the door and you said, oh, good old Katie. Come on, girl, let's be together. And she said, but I deserve someone who loves me for me and won't put me at second best. I said, Katie, please talk to Taylor and Brooke for me, please. Because this energy that you're giving off, they need to give off that same energy, especially my girl, Taylor. I do not want her marrying Ridge, but if that makes her happy, okay then. But Nikki, stay on topic. We are talking about Katie and Bill. So Katie says, you, you don't want me. And she said, I don't mean to be funny about it because she was actually making it into a joke. And I said, that's when you know you over somebody. When you can hurt, when you can say something that would, you know, would hurt your own feelings, but you can say it and laugh because Bill is a joke. He is a total clown and he needs to get up out this woman's face telling her that I want to be with you. When you just said those exact same words to Brooke and Katie was red, she un already understood what was, I, 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 don't touch that. She, uh, she already understood everything that was going on. So, Bill, there was no need for you to even try that because she said, uh-uh, no thanks. I, I have some self-esteem, sir. Um, I have self-esteem, and my self-esteem won't allow me to be with you. Yes, I am here for it. And so once she says that, um, she tells him she don't want to make this, you know, ugly because he – she loves, they have a child together. They were lovers. They've been married. She doesn't want this to turn ugly, but she doesn't want him to be like thinking of her as second best. Um, and also she wants to remain friends. So don't do this no more. That's what I heard her say. Don't, don't, don't try this again. Cause I'm not here for it. And so I was like, yes, Katie. And so she walked on up the stairs. I said, so y'all just leave Bill downstairs. I mean, I know he's not going to do anything, but come on. But he was telling her the same thing. I always think of you as my Katie. You're my Katie. Move on. So then Carter come in because Carter was back there with Katie. Katie was telling Bill off. Carter was back there rubbing his hands like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So then Carter comes in or whatever, and he's talking to Bill, and he said, I can't even believe you. And Bill said, excuse me? I, 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 you better leave my computer alone, ma'am. He said, I can't even believe you. You um, you really set up here and told gave Katie the exact same speech that you gave to her sister? Telling her that you loved her and she was the one for you, uh, what, uh, sir. And he said, "Well, well, who are you to tell me anything? Mind your business." And Carter, y'all know I'm about to paraphrase. He said, "Katie is my business, and well, I'm very happy that she put you in your place that way you needed to be. That she let you know she is not second best." He said, "Cause she doesn't deserve somebody who um really wants to be with her sister, and they just choose her because they can't have the person that they want." And he said, "And what do you know about that?" What she, he said, "She deserves to be with a man that puts her first. This is Carter the Bill." And Bill said, "Well, wait a minute." Who are you trying to say is the man? You and y'all, what really took me back, bless you, what really took me back, took me out. And I said, what is happening? Is that Bill told Carter, you stay away from Katie. That's my Katie. That's my wife. And Carter said, excuse me. It was the possession possessiveness that bill said it in and carter called him out for it. he said she is not a possession and she's to serve someone who loves her for her and not as someone that he could put on the shelf i'm paraphrasing that he could put on the shelf and when he he can't get attention from her sister he can bring out and play with no that's not what katie deserves and so then katie is on the stairs because she done came back down i guess she was about to leave but she hear so she hear them talking or whatever and she heard carter really going you know going hard for her and so she was like okay and so carter was just telling bill like and further more you can't tell me what to do um 
you know, I, I guess, I guess Carl, I mean, Bill thought he was talking to the dressmaker or the convict, convict, but he did call, he did call Carter. What did he call him? Oh my God, my brain is so, oh, he called him something because, you know, he officiates all those weddings and everything, but he said, you ain't talking to the dressmaker or the, um, the convict. I'm not going to sit here and take the stuff that you be dishing out, you know? And so that was it pretty, pretty much with them because Carter walked on out and he said, you ain't, you know, it, what my business with Katie has nothing to do with you. And Carter was like, and I'm done. And I said, well, I Okay. <laughs> I'm here for this. I wanted Bill with Lee, but Bill ain't no good. He a scumbag. Leave everybody alone. So then we see Taylor and Thomas, and she tells Thomas, I really wish your dad had told me about um, the whole thing with B Brooke, because I asked him, was there any reason that he came to me? But he said um, it that wasn't the reason, you know, her calling CPS, that he came to me because he loves me. I said, girl, now, ma Miss Ma'am, you know you my girl, but you're not finna sit up here and believe this man came to you only. But Thomas says, if Mom, he loves you. That's why he came to you. It has nothing to do with Brooke. It's because he loves you. So don't think that way. Don't talk that way. You know, we've wanted this for a long time. And I said, well, okay. You know what, Taylor? I'm not going to even get on you today because it, you you about to have your wedding day. And I don't know if this wedding is going to happen or not. So I'm going to let you ride for the day <laughs> with that silliness. You know, you my girl. And I don't understand how y'all be in my comments telling me that y'all like Taylor, but you want her with Ridge. All he does is hurt her. That's all he does. But anyway, I mean, he, Ridge is such a joke to me. I actually feel bad for Brooke and Taylor. Let's move on. So Eric is talking to Ridge, and once again, he is telling him it is not too late to uh, say no, say no to the wedding. You know how y'all did y'all ever watch that say yes to the dress that show? I used to love that show. I don't know. Does it still come on? It might. It might come on. But you know, when you start getting older, you don't watch TV like that. But anyways, he tells him. It's not too late. Well, I mean, he didn't say that, but that's what I heard. It's not too late to call this wedding off because you know you love you some Brooke. And Taylor's a sweet girl, but that, that's not the love of your life. And he says, I'm good. I'm going to stay right here with Taylor. Um, And Carter went to give me the cufflinks. So then Finn um, and the kids and Lee come in. And Lee looked cute. I like the dress, Lee. And I said, well, Lee come in and she talking to Ridge and all that. I said, remember when they was trying to um, have them with an attitude towards Lee and Finn, when Finn had a personality, shut that right on down and said, uh-uh, my mama kept me alive. So what you're not going to do is have an attitude with her. I had to interject that because Finn has no storyline anymore. <laughs> he, he should. Something should happen with Sheila so he can have some airtime besides being Mrs. Uh, Steffi. But Mr. Steffi, sorry. But anyway, so then we go to Thomas. Thomas comes in because Lee goes and she's she's going to speak to Taylor. So Thomas comes in and they're all talking. I'm sorry, y'all. My sinus is acting up. So he's talking to them and he says, um, where's Steffi? And they said she went to check on Douglas. Now Thomas hears this and the look in his eyes said, God dang. <laughs> So then we move on and Lee go up there with Taylor because you know now they friends and and Taylor and Lee doesn't have a problem with Finn being with them now you know because at first it was all oh you forced us so the reason he got shot but whatever let's move on we're gonna act like this never happened so now she says oh my gosh I'm I'm having a, a great wedding day and and Lee says you deserve it and let's move on because that was pretty much it um somebody else is happy for my girl and she said oh nothing's gonna happen this time um no horse or anything is gonna come in so then we go back downstairs or whatever and it's uh lee and ridge and all them and she tells ridge oh your bride is so beautiful he says i can't wait to see it myself so then carter comes in he says sorry i le i'm late but i had to handle something and they was like at brooks and he said no nah, i wouldn't brooke didn't even see me i said carter told me i had to handle it up on bill but he ain't telling what all went down because it's not about him it's about the way today he said but uh Again, I apologize for being late. And Eric said, um, you're the officiant. We, you know, this wedding wasn't going to pop without you. And so then um, the next thing we see 
is they tell Carter, I mean, they tell Ridge, hey, take a picture of us. And they were like, okay, we can take a picture. And then Ridge going to take a, a he was going to use his phone to take a picture. And he looks at that, his photo of Brooke as his screensaver. And his mind wonders. I said, uh-uh. Not on my girl's wedding day. You would, you would not do my girl like this on her wedding day. Now, if there's one day you're not going to think about Brooke, it's today, sir. With your trifling butt. So then Brooke is over there. She at the house thinking about Ridge and just, she can't even understand how did this happen? Why is, how is this my life? Me not being married to the man I love. I don't know, girl, but it is. So then we go to Steffi and Douglas and Douglas is feeling really guilty because he has let Steffi, hey mama, because he has let Steffi know uh, about what Thomas has done. And he feels guilty about that. And she says, no, this is not your fault. And don't you worry about your dad. I can take care of it. So she said, don't you worry about it. I'll take care of your dad. And she said, so your father called, your dad called CPS on himself. And he said, yes, so he could break up Grandma Brooke and um, Grandpa so that Grandma Taylor and Grandpa can be together. And she said, oh, my gosh. Um, Steffi can't believe it. She was just like, I, I can't believe he did this. And he said, I, I, he told me not to say anything, but it's just wrong. And she said, it is wrong, but don't you worry, I'll take care of it. So then Thomas comes in and Steffi tells Douglas, um, okay, so Thomas comes in and they're all three of them in the room, Douglas, Steffi, and Thomas. And Douglas is feeling bad about what happened, but Steffi says, Thomas, what did you do? How how could you be so cruel by um, letting dad and everyone think that Brooke Brooke made the call to CPS. He said, cruel. I'm not being cruel. Douglas tell her because he want Douglas to continue to lie and say that he didn't make that call. And she said, I heard the recordings. And then she tell Douglas, don't you worry about it because Douglas is looking nervous and afraid. Y'all see how he reacted when Thomas came in that room. He's looking nervous and afraid. And she said, don't. I'll take care of your dad. Go on downstairs and play. And Thomas said, it's okay. You can play. So then Steffi and Thomas have it out. Cause she said, I can't believe you did this. And he said, what you're defending Brooke. And he said, all the, all the things that you did, you know, um, blocking calls and, and something about an alarm system and everything. And she said, but I guess Steffi is like, that was childish. <laughs> what you did is crazy. And so he's just like, we, it, it got the results we wanted, which was mom and dad together. And she said, not this way. We want dad to be with mom because he wants to be with mom. Not because he thinks Brooke did something wrong. Like who wants their parents to be with someone and their dad had to be tricked into it, which is what she's saying. I don't, I didn't want him being tricked into being with my mama. I wanted him just to want to be with my mama. And he was just like, well, in the end result, we got what we got. And she said, I'm telling you got, you got to tell the truth. And he's like, no, we got what we wanted. And she said, I'm going to tell and you, you can't stop me. And he was like, no one needs to tell what was done. So then Brooke, excuse me, not Brooke. So then Taylor comes in and she's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? You guys are fussing. You can hear it. What are you arguing about? And Thomas was like, nothing. Everything's fine. And she's, and Taylor, uh, Steffi said, no, it's not. Mom, there's something you need to know that's going to change everything. And Taylor was like, what is it? She said, something Thomas has done. And y'all, that was the bold and the beautiful today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you tomorrow, y'all. Tomorrow is the final episode of the week. Because, you know, the holidays, they're not, they're not going to be on because of um, other programs that are going to be on at that time. But thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your night. Goodbye.